Hey everyone, welcome back to Part Out where we talk about off-road rigs and accessories. Now as most of you already know, the mid-size truck market is absolutely blowing up like crazy. You've got the Toyota Tacoma, you've got the Chevy Colorado, and now over here we have the all-new 2019 Ford Ranger back in its place here in the States. All right, so here we go. Brand new Ford Ranger. Well, new to us. It's actually been around the world and doing all its stuff internationally for years. But we finally have it. It's got a few mixed reactions as far as the body styling cues and everything for that. Um, I personally think it's got a little more like a Ford Taurus thing going on as far as the actual shape and overall design of the truck. But I'm not going to let that deter me from the fact that it's a new Ford Ranger with an FX4 package. So up front, we have a full solid steel bumper. We have a full front solid skid plate made out of steel. Now you're hearing me say the word steel and you're thinking to yourself, isn't Ford doing this whole big push for the aluminum bodies and all that stuff? Technically, yes, but the Ranger has uh, different steel components to it in the right places as far as safety goes. Now the actual A-frame top and the actual just, you know, cab of the truck is actually steel. The hood, doors and all that is made out of aluminum. And then for the bed, the actual bed portion is solid steel as well, making it very strong. Now under the aluminum hood. We have gas props that actually prop the hood up automatically. Kind of a nice touch. But under it, we have a 2.3 liter EcoBoost four-cylinder engine, and that's cranking out 270 horsepower, 310 foot-pounds of torque, which is pretty good as far as uh, the numbers out of a four-cylinder engine powering a truck. This four-cylinder EcoBoost engine is actually paired up to a 10-speed automatic transmission that is actually making the Ranger the only truck in its class to offer a 10-speed automatic transmission. And to be honest, it's actually a pretty good setup. That transmission knows what gear to drop down into when you want to get on it, and as well as when you're on the highway going 70-ish miles an hour, the truck is uh, coasting along just fine. You can barely even feel the truck shifting through the gears. Now coming around to the bed of the Ranger, as I mentioned before, it's actually made out of steel. So that way if you have any like you know sharp objects or you're throwing a bunch of logs in the back, it's not going to puncture through the floor of this bed. So pretty good thing to have here. Um, you'll notice on the front of it that it'll actually have a gap, and that's not a tolerance issue, that's actually a drainage spot where the water can pour out through the front of the bed and as well as through the back. And I actually haven't quite figured out why yet, but there's actually a large gap between where the bed uh, tailgate meets with the actual bed sides. There's a, about almost like a quarter inch gap in between there. I don't know if that's for aerodynamics or what, or if that's just the way Ford measured it out. Something that I noticed, but probably a lot of people that buy this truck aren't going to notice that at all. But just a little quirks about it. The size of the bed is pretty ample. It's pretty normal as far as a mid-size truck goes. It's about the same as a Chevy Colorado or a Toyota Tacoma, um, which is obviously the market that these trucks are competing against. So all in all, pretty good bed. It also has the optional plastic liner or Linex type style liner that you can get in here. This one has no liner, so we're going to expect this thing to get scratched up pretty bad. Coming around to the inside of the Ford Ranger, I completely feel like I'm driving a car versus a truck. Uh, just the way I'm sitting, I'm sitting down low versus up high where I can have a better visibility seeing over the hood. Uh, I, I like that in trucks and off-road vehicles when you can actually have a, a captain style seat so you can actually see up and over where you're looking, especially when you're on the trail, it's a lot easier to maneuver your vehicle that way. But not really the case here. I'm sitting down low and I'm kind of have that sporty feel as far as like a sedan would be. As far as the interior layout goes, it's very simple plane. Uh, I mean, Ford didn't want to do anything too crazy with this truck. They just wanted to make a simple truck that just works, and that's exactly what they did. They actually have an, a normal e-brake in here. Nothing like as far as an electronic switch or anything to activate the e-brake. You can yank up on that, and it works just fine. Uh, we happened to test out another Ranger that the e-brake worked perfectly. You've got two 12-volt plug-ins. We also have two USB plug-ins in the front, as well as one 12-volt in the back and two USBs in the back. Four-wheel drive selector up here, which is a little turn dial where you can go from two high, four high, and four low. Like I said, it's it's a pretty plain Jane truck as far as the interior goes. Uh, we've got the touchscreen up here, which is the Ford's Sync 3 system. It works, but it's got a little bit of a lag to it going between the different screen menus. Nothing to really complain about, but it's just something to, to expect when you're looking at these trucks. It, it just happens. I, it, it's a Ford. I don't know. Um, two cup holders, center console, and then center console doesn't exactly close until you, you do that, then it closes. So for the backseat of this truck, 
with this being a crew cab version of the Ranger, it's, it's the biggest interior that you can get for this truck. And I'm not dogging on this truck at all, but I was kind of expecting the interior to have a little bit more leg room for the back seats. Now I'm six foot three. I'm gonna go ahead and try and hop in there. We actually have the seat moved forward a pretty average amount, but still enough for a normal average person to sit in the front seat. So just gonna... Now, as far as the back seat storage goes, there's actually storage compartments underneath the seat. And when you pull this lever, it folds up and you can see right there that we have uh, different cubbies for different stow and go options. Then we fold this down and the Ranger is a little bit different than the other trucks in the, this market segment because most of the other trucks have split rear seats. So you can fold half the seat down and still have one passenger and haul different cargo that needs a flat space to land on or sit on. Not the case here because what we have going on with the Ford is it's all one piece. So it's the whole rear seat folds down together. But another thing is that you'll have to fold the headrest down because obviously not enough room back there. So they have buttons that easily flip the headrest down but the other problem that we're running into is that it doesn't fold flat, remotely even close to flat. Um, and it's kind of just up on an angle like, like that. So your best bet is to leave the truck back seat folded up and then you just use, use the bench for whatever storage you're trying to do as far as hauling larger items that need to sit on a flat surface if you can't fit it in the bed comfortably. All right, so now as far as suspension goes on the new Ford Ranger, we have a monoleaf setup in the rear and we have independent front suspension in the front. Now this truck is actually featuring the FX4 off-road package. And what that basically gives you is that you get the FX4 shocks and you get the auto locking rear differential. Now that's a pretty good thing to have. I mean, that competes directly with the Toyota Tacoma TRD package, but it doesn't exactly compete against the ZR2 Colorado as that truck has front and rear electronic locking differentials. If you want to learn more about that truck, go check out our ZR2 beatdown video on our YouTube channel. It's an awesome video. We had a lot of fun with that truck. As far as actual tire clearance goes, though, we've got nice rounded wheel wells so you can fit a larger tire size in there if need be. But one thing that's going to hinder you from fitting a larger tire size on this truck is that this truck is outfitted with crash bars in the front. One of the few trucks that is actually fully integrated with full size crash bars. Um, for safety reasons, it's a big plus, but if you're not really all about that whole safe driving thing, you can get rid of those and pull them out and then you can fit some larger tires in there, which is what we like to do. Now you may have heard me mention that this has a mono leaf spring in the rear and that makes you kind of question what kind of payload can this truck handle. And the bed of this truck can actually handle up to 1400 pounds as far as a payload capacity goes. And then with this EcoBoost four cylinder engine, we're actually able to get 7,500 pounds of towing capacity, which is pretty impressive for a truck of this size. So as far as technology goes on this truck, you've got rear sensors as far as backup sensors and parking proximity, as well as the same thing in the front of the truck. So if you're looking to shop around for like an aftermarket bumper setup, make sure it can integrate those sensors in there because trust me, you're gonna wanna have them. Otherwise this whole system electronically might not like you very much. Also a neat thing with the Ford Rangers is that all of them, they come standard with auto braking. That could be annoying, but you can disable it. Now there is one thing that we did notice about the actual suspension components on this truck as in compared to the Toyota Tacoma and the Chevy Colorados is that the actual CV shafts on the front suspension are much shorter as well as the upper control arms. Those are also pretty short as well. And what that'll kind of equate to is that you'll have a lot less uh, suspension travel when you're trying to droop out your suspension going over rocks or trail divots or anything like that. Um, just kind of an interesting thing. I mean, it's not make or break as far as this truck going off road. It's just going to give it a little more, uh, complications on the trails as far as trying to decide how to get over obstacles. But one way that you can fix that in the future is that you'll have uh, aftermarket companies like BDS suspension or zone off road or somebody like that, that'll come out with a lift kit system. That'll obviously give you more droop uh, travel uh, to get your truck over those obstacles a little bit better. Um, now, speaking of uh, aftermarket products and stuff like that, our friends over at Max Lighter Brothers, they're actually, this is their truck. And they also have another truck that we uh, went out and uh, shot through the snow and stuff like that. We had a lot of fun with those guys and what they're planning to do is they're actually going to take the Ford Rangers and take them from looking like lifted truck Ford Taurus looking things and they're actually going to make them look like proper off-road trucks that you can take and wheel and beat the crap out of. 
Make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube and like us on Facebook so we can keep giving you guys all the updates that Pardout does. And for right now, we'll see you guys next time. Punch in the air. Thank <laughs> you.